In today's news, a major drug and firearm bust on Virgin Garda. Well, two arrested and one on the run. A 90% increase in tourist arrivals in 2023. But unite BVI to rebuild the Altius Calif Primary School and renovate the Willard Wheatley Primary School. A new higher education of a licensing board appointed. And Visor welcomes two newly certified crew members. A viewers, these and more stories when to it for news return. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. Yo, everything good there? Bye. This thing got me one way, daddy. What you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home. Keeping out that trouble, me. Wow. What's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into, well, you know I huff. I watch him ball. I even watch him football. Dad, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hook. Hook, I tell you. Welcome viewers to the Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024 edition of 284 News. I am Kamal Haynes, bringing the latest out of the British Virgin Islands. While leading today's news, in a significant operation conducted on Thursday, January 18, 2024, officers from the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force made a substantial breakthrough during a routine stop and search on Virgin Garda. The operation led to the apprehension of two individuals and the discovery of a cache of weapons and drugs. Police said during the inspection of a vehicle with three male occupants, law enforcement officers uncovered a rifle and a hand pistol along with multiple rounds of ammunition. Additionally, a notable quantity of drugs suspected to be cannabis was seized during the search. Akim E. Joseph, 37, hailing from St. Croix, United States Virgin Islands, and Kyrie Garner, 32, from the Valley Virgin Garda, were both jointly charged with a range of offenses, including possession of a prohibited firearm, keeping an unlicensed firearm, two counts of unlawful possession of explosives, and unlawful possession of cannabis with intent to supply. Police said the accused are currently in custody and are at or sorry and are to appear uh, at the magistrate's court at the next available sitting. However, a third occupant managed to escape on foot and is still evading authorities. The fugitive is described as five feet tall with a dark complexion and plaited hair and was last seen wearing a red top, blue jeans and a gold chain during the time of his escape. The RVIPF is urging the public to come forward with any information that may lead to locating that escaped individual. Well, those with relevant details can contact the Crime Stoppers line at 800-8477. Alternatively, individuals can provide information directly to the RVIPF's intelligence unit at 368-9339. The police says, are they more assured that the information will be treated confidentially as the investigation continues. Now moving on viewers, where non-profit organization Unite BVI will be rebuilding the Altia Scatliff Primary School as well as renovating the Willard Wheatley Primary. This was announced by the Education Minister Honorable Shari B. De Castro at a ceremony to mark the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between Unite BVI and the Government of the Virgin Islands. But the minister began by first providing background on the situation at the Altius Catliff Primary School. 
In the midst of our pursuit of educational progress, a visit to the Altair Scatliff Primary School unveiled a crisis that had been silently brewing beneath the surface for some time. The principal's urgent alert painted a vivid picture of a school in peril with palpable fear among teachers and a chilling manifestation of the imminent danger that lurked within the failing infrastructure. We painfully recall when overnight a classroom roof had succumbed to the relentless decay and collapsed, which was revealed to the staff when it, they arrived the following morning. The danger was stark and immediate. A crisis demanded urgent action. The ministry mobilized swiftly, exploring multiple avenues to address the imminent threat to the safety of our students and educators. In our quest for a comprehensive solution, a crucial call was placed to unite BVI, beckoning them to join hands in the face of adversity. Adi Castro shared in detail what led to the analysis of the school promises. A thorough evaluation of the structural integrity of the building, an assessment that ultimately unite BVI facilitated by engaging an engineering firm. A visit to the site ensued the deterioration of the edifice was painfully visible, akin to witnessing the unraveling of a once story fortress. The ceilings of the classrooms bore the scars of time, displaying visible signs of distress. Days later, the ministry received a report that delivered a sobering verdict. Use of the Altair Scatliff Primary School building should be suspended immediately due to extreme safety concerns. The weight of the decision echoed across the territory. Well, in a moment of profound gratitude and excitement, the Castro shared that Unite BVI would be rebuilding the Altius Catholic School along with renovating the Willard Wheatley Primary School. This MOU is a testament of our shared commitment and it will remain in force for five years, an enduring pledge to collaborative development. It will be the guiding force behind a myriad of projects that will unfold over this five-year period. But today, with great zeal and enthusiasm, I am delighted to announce the project for year one, which is 2024. Firstly, in year one, we embark on the reconstruction of the Altair Scatliff Primary School. This project, yes, please. <laughs> If we think about it, this project has come full circle, echoing the time when our strong relationship with Unite BVI was forged during the school's relocation. In a sense, it's only fitting that Unite BVI now has a stake in the rebuild of the mighty, mighty Scatliff, a symbol of resilience and the unwavering spirit of collaboration. A Minister De Castro noted that Unite BVI will also be conducting structural assessments on all public schools which led to the announcement of project number two, the renovation of Willard Wheatley. It became clear that a comprehensive approach to infrastructure was necessary, prompting a crucial collaboration with Unite BVI. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, once again, Unite BVI stepped in and agreed to fund structural assessments for all public schools in the territory. Yes. This initial condition assessments that has been done has enabled us to prioritize project number two of year one, the renovation of the Willard Whitley Primary School. Well, up next, viewers, more local news. One Stop Auto, located in the r r Malone Complex, Parkwood Pond, is having a huge liquidation sale on all inventory, excluding vehicles and genuine Toyota and Lexus parts. Get no less than 50% off all items on shelves and inventory room. Items such as car covers, steering wheel covers, wipers, sea lamps, chemicals, emergency cones, adhesives, license plates, frames, air filters, oil filters, front brakes, rear brakes, front rotors, rear rotors, radiators, shocks, and much, much more. More. A specific listing of all makes and models for which parts are available at liquidation prices will be posted on our Facebook page. Some claim that the age of a true gentleman is far behind us, but here at 284 Media, we disagree. He may appear in different guises today, 
but the values and ideals that make him a gent still stand. 284 Media proudly presents The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman with yours truly, Ron Grant, a show poised to help guide modern day men into 21st century distinguished gentlemen. Don't worry, it's not all about suits and bow ties, but raw, real life lessons that translate to grounded, community minded, well rounded men. The Art of a Distinguished Gentleman, Season 5, a 284 Media production. Welcome back, viewers. The British Virgin Islands experienced a significant increase in tourism arrivals in 2023, with a total of 994,253 visitors, marking a 90% increase compared to 2022. But the month of March was the most popular, attracting 138,472 visitors across all categories. In an exclusive interview with Twit4 Media, Junior Minister for Culture and Tourism, the Honorable Luce Hodge-Smith reflected on this success and acknowledged the impactful role of the Ministry of Communication and Works in growing the BVI's presence as a cruise ship destination. We are very close to a, an extremely high number, even higher number of, of tourist visitors here to our territory. And the last time I spoke in terms of the numbers, it was close to 800 and something thousand uh, visitors that we were able to see here in the BVI. And that was when I was I spoke at the House of Assembly during the budget debate. So, of course, the numbers have increased over that period. And, and this is visitors that we have as overnight visitors cruise visitors and day trippers. Day trippers, of course, are just those that come for a few hours, like the cruise visitors and overnight are those that stay at least 24 hours on our shores. They are considered overnight visitors and 24 hours and more. So basically, I would attribute this high number of visitors thus far to the high number of our cruise passengers. And the high number of our cruise passengers, of course, in increased due to the efforts of the government and spe specifically through the Ministry of Communications and Works, Honorable Kai Reimer, uh, who's responsible for the BVI Ports Authority, who is connection to the cruise industry and the efforts last year or some time ago to increase the number of our cruise cruise lines coming to, to the territory. The majority of tourists arrived via cruise ships with a total of 719,519 cruise ship visitors. But this represents a 109% increase compared to the previous year. But the month of March was particularly busy with 107,569 cruise ship visitors. The most significant growth in this category occurred in July with 32,943 cruise ship visitors, an increase of 233 on its current trajectory, 2024 is likely to be a record-breaking year for tourism in the British Virgin Islands. Now moving on, viewers, the Cabinet of the Virgin Islands has appointed six representatives from civil society, a legal practitioner, and the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports to the Higher Education Licensing Board for three years beginning December 1st, 2023, where the name appointees are Dr. Arlene Smith-Thompson, Mr. Glenn Harrigan, Mr. Ian Smith, Ms. Serby Williams, Ms. Jamelia Foy, and Dr. Derry Hodge. The appointees progress or possess, sorry, expertise in higher education, finance, accounting, business, commerce, and law. Dr. Smith-Thompson and Ms. Williams specifically re represent higher education interests. Dr. Smith-Thompson will serve as chairman and Mr. Harrigan as deputy chairman. But the permanent secretary for the Ministry of Education, Youth Affairs and Sports will hold an ex officio position. When on public service, members will receive $700 a monthly stipend for the chairman and $500 for regular members. But the Attorney General's Chamber has been instructed to prepare a resolution for submission to the House of Assembly to formalize the appointment. 
Uh, moving on viewers, the Virgin Island Search and Rescue has announced the addition of two newly certified crew members to their life-saving team, Sidar of Held and James Campbell. After hundreds of hours of intensive training over the past year, Held and Campbell have now completed all requirements to join the Visor crew responding to marine emergencies. A Visor congratulated Held and Campbell on achieving this significant milestone in a recent Facebook post, acknowledging the major time commitment and dedication it takes to become a Visor Rescue crew member. As the territory's only dedicated marine search and rescue organization, Visor provides a vital public service. Held and Campbell will now be part of a dispatching on rescue vessels, providing emergency medical aid and saving lives at sea. Of the words, up next, more news from across the British Virgin Islands. Start the year off with more. More speed, more downloading, more savings, and more FIA. CCT FIA Fiber Internet gives you the speed you need to keep the whole family connected. Packages starting at $119 with speeds from 300 megabytes per second. Super fast, unlimited downloads, even more reliable connectivity, plus free live streaming TV for the family to enjoy. Sign up for the absolute best fiber internet service in the BVI, CCT FIA, and pay no installation fee. Plus, get CCT Live TV for free. You deserve more. Get more with CCT. Life Unlimited. Today, we are doing shark research. So today, we are doing whale research with Beyond the Reef. And wherever I go, I take CCT with me because my life is unlimited. My assistant. Yes. <laughs> you want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top of power. Eh? Welcome back viewers and thank you so much for sticking with us. In an exclusive interview with 284 Media, members of the Lion Club of the Virgin Islands reflected on the life, legacy and contributions of Lions Carvin Malone and Grace Flats Waters who recently passed away hours apart. Both members were stalwart Lion Club members who served their communities selflessly. In a reflection of Lion Malone, Lion Hesketh, his sponsor into the club, spoke about a young Carvin and his dedication over the years. Well, he was very enthusiastic in other things he was doing in the basketball court and in the community, community activists and so on. And I thought then that the Lions Club could do with someone of that kind of personality and caliber and so forth. So I spoke with him. We had actually had relationships because um, being a contractor, his father had a lumber yard and he was there, so we got um, acquainted there. And uh, he was very much interested when I told him about lionism and the work that we're doing. And um, I says, okay, fine, um, you can come to one of our general meetings. And before I had time to, uh, to give him a preferred meeting, he showed up at the Lions Den, because he knew most of the, uh, the Lions Den, you know, Paul Watley, the seats, and those guys there. So he showed up and he was in, and he was in from the beginning. So we just got him inducted and we got him, you know, right in there and he started to work. And I'm so happy I'm the proud sponsor uh, of him and the work that he done in the community. He was sponsored in May, May 1st, 1987. 
Lion Kamika spoke about his ability to revitalize the Lions Club. And it's interesting because Leos are now reflecting on what Lion Carvin would have meant to them, meant to the movement, and the impact that he would have had in their lives. And it was about maybe around 2004, 2005 when I just returned from school. And Lion Carvin had decided that it was time for us to revamp and re-energize and re-inject just a new life into the Leo Club of Tortola. And he went out and he scouted a bunch of young persons in the in the BVI community. As Including you know. yourself. Well, the thing is, and that, that's the thing, you know, with, with the line carving, you always didn't know exactly what you were getting into, but you were going. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't come to me directly. He, he has a way of putting people to work. Okay. And he, he ensured that his recruits <laughs> could recruit. So I was a recruit of a recruit. <laughs> and I he was he was a, my first Leo advisor into the Leo Club. And he remained with me, I guess, until the day he would have passed on. I mean, always supportive, always willing to to try to ensure that everybody was well taken care of. I remember even when I sat as president last year, um, you know, we had different initiatives that were not quite going as we hoped they would. And then Carmen said, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? Leave it to me. Hmm. And that's, that was it. Or he would have an idea or a project and he'd say, like Lion, after the Lion president mentioned, he called, Lion president, so <laughs> this is what is happening. I need this done. And you did. Lion Carbon moved mountains. Yes. There's, a, there's nobody else that I have met with that level of gravitas, that level of magnetic energy. He was a force. In the remembrance of Lion Flats Waters, a charter member of the Valley Sound Lions Club, Lion Narvel spoke about who she was as a person. Well, Lion Grace was very pivotal in the Lions movement on Virgin Gorda. She was one of the chartered members of the now Valley Sound Lions Club. She actually started with the Virgin Goddard Lioness Club before in 92, where they were able to become Lions Club instead of Lioness Club. Uh, she has served in, you can say, basically every position within the club over the tenure that she's been a part of Lions. And she has been, you could call her a matriarch, okay. one of the pivotal persons, knowledge-wise, and just one of those individuals that you just love to be around. Her, 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 her warmth, her spirit, her attitude was always welcoming, and you can always go to her for anything, information-wise, or just, just to have a little chat about mm -hmm. anything, to be honest. He also highlighted some of her favorite projects over the years. I know one of her favorite projects was actually working with the seniors. Okay. Um, that was something dear to her. We uh, try to make sure that the seniors, sometimes we sort of neglect them. But one of her main passions was to ensure that we look after them and take care of them because they helped to build a country and to build what we have as a community. So that was one of our um, favorite projects that she will she love to work on. As viewers, for the full interview, visit all to it for media platforms. I'm moving on to our final story viewers where Caden Alfonso, Amani Morris, Gavier Dawson, and Kennedy Bruley are the winners of their respective groups following the territory's first Pumse competition, which is hosted by Boys Taekwondo Academy on Saturday, January 20th. More in this report. There were three stages of competition, which saw 14 students competing, ranging from beginners, yellow and orange belts, intermediate, green, purple and blue belts, and advanced, brown and red belts. Competing in group one at a beginner's level, 11-year-old Kanan Alfonso, who wears an orange belt, got the better of Maximilian Zurich to win his group.
group two at the intermediate level, green belt Amani Morris delivered on his execution to prevail over Elizabeth Dugan, Tyra Davis, and Jada Roberts. Jimmy. Also competing at the intermediate level were the students of Group 3, which consisted of Ray John Penn, Tyrese Davis, Javier Dawson, and Nikita Richardson. 16-year-old Dawson in his green belt got the nod from the judges and was declared a winner. Meanwhile, at the advanced level in Group 4, the 11-year-old Red Belt Kennedy Brulee secured first place against Destiny Jeffrey, Ciara Burke, and Chanel Peters. After the competition, Twit4 Media spoke to owner of the Boynes Taekwondo Academy, Master Alonzo Boynes, who was also one of three judges. He said he was impressed with the performances displayed by his students, who came out and brought their best. Because these are students that I see daily, you know, my expectations are from what I see them normally perform. There were quite a few students that really elevated their performance when they were conducting their Pumse. They really generated more energy to put more emphasis, more so than what they normally do. Um, they definitely had the mindset that this is a competition, so they wanted to put out their best, you know? Um, it was so great to see some of the students really um, take their Pumse knowledge to another level to sell the um, technique and form while they were conducting it. Master Boynes also spoke about the next steps following the successful hosting of the Pumse competition and his goal of including the participation of regional students from within the Taekwondo body. Being the first um, Pumse competition that we're having here in the BVI, actually, I think this might be one of the first or reintroduction in the whole of the Virgin Islands. Um, the first thing I would say is this was the platform that our kids, our students, our um, practitioners, um, we're going to be able to now reach out to the other Caribbean um, countries that we are part of, the Caribbean Association that we're part of. They are all aware that we did this Pumse. So the next step from here is, of course, we're going to have another Pumse competition next year. And then we're going to be looking for a bigger venue, bigger space. And then we want to invite the other um, islands, Antigua, um, Anguilla. We have... Barbados. There's a lot of other countries that we're part of that we want to open up this because normally the Pumse competitions are restricted to just black belts. You know, so being able to bring it for more junior students, more color belt students, it actually shows them exactly what's going to be required when they get to the senior level, the black belt level, the competition on a national level, we kind of open their eyes from now. This also gives us experience and exposure in the other countries because now we're going to be extended invitations to them and invitations have already started saying on, our ne on their next color belt competitions, they want to see if we would be considering 
participating in their Pumse tournament. Reporting for Tweet 4 News, I am Kamal Haynes. Our viewers, that's all we have for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com and like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BBI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Kamal Haynes and I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a safe and enjoyable evening. Bye-bye.